wax ring on the toilet. A couple things you're gonna need, wax rings. I normally suggest getting two of them without the black horn in the middle. They call it a, a wax only or a, um, I can't think of the name of it. Just wax only without the black horn in the middle. Channel locks or 7 16 uh, ratchet for the bolts. Maybe a screwdriver or something to remove the old wax. New supply line. Highly suggest using the poly ones instead of the flexible uh, supplies. Some kind of gloves. This one has a uh, metal supply. Don't really care for. Shut the water off. Force the tool to make sure it's working. It don't seem to be shutting off like it should. Could be rust or debris inside there, so I turn it back on. Shape. So I'm going to have to turn the main off. Okay. Now shut the main off. I'm going to open this back up for a second. Let it relieve the pressure. And then shut it back off so I can try to prevent some of that water from coming out on me. Since I'm replacing the supply line, I'm popping it loose at the bottom. I guess it don't matter the order if you're going to be replacing it. If you're planning on keeping the supply line, I don't ever suggest taking it loose at that spot. Those threads are finer threads, a little harder to get started. On, on the side where the wax ring is leaking. Now I suggest getting as much water out of the bowl as possible. You can either, uh, you know, you want to hold your handle down, you don't water out, bucket flush it, or plunge it, that way you don't spill no water in the process. As soon as you make the toilet unlevel, it will pour out.
Yeah, this is what I found. No wonder it was leaking. And no wonder there wasn't a bolt. The flange is busted on that side. So I think there's enough room. We'll try putting a uh, spanner flange on it. To get it fixed. If uh, need be, we can always anchor this style to, to the floor. Another option is using these. It's just the ones I have are too long. You always have to trim them. You just drill a hole and put it down in there and it starts to expand. There's several different ways to repair this flange. I don't have all of the options with me. Um, there are other YouTube videos about it. I, um, there's one where you can put it down inside there and tighten bolts and smash rubber, but that four inch cast don't come up high enough. Normally would use a spanner, but I can't get it to go up under here to get it close enough to it so that I can still hide those. So then I thought about putting that in there and anchoring it, but that brings it up too high. So then I have the option of knocking this out and then putting that back in. However, I think with this one, I'm gonna end up doing that. It's a stainless steel ring made by Suix Chief. I'm going to use the old flange as an anchor.
this bathroom was a challenge. Yes. Got inside there and found the flange was broken. That's why it didn't have no bolt. Oh. So it all of a sudden made sense. <laughs> but uh, we're in the middle of uh, making a repair on it now. Do you want some paper towels? Oh yeah, they could be very useful. Thank you so much. Towels sitting out in the garage. Oh, wow. Here's some here for you. Thank you, dear. I'll go out and get that Now, because there's still one good side of the flange left, I'm going to use, put a bolt inside of it. They left the old bolt in there. Just smacked it down all the way. I guess it'll work. We're going to try to use as much of everything as we possibly can to get this repair flange anchored and in a manner that it will last as long as possible. I'm going to set a fresh roll up here on this sink in case you run Thank out you of that. Thank you so bowl. much. Those are so handy. I can't dare keep enough of them on my truck. I found a great big bag of them out there. Yes, indeed.
Might be about as good as we can get it. concrete just on the other side of the flange to be able to drill into a tap cons. You have to add concrete then come back. But uh so we'll just see what this does for us. It seems pretty good. This style of drain, this is one of the very few places that having a horn on the wax ring is useful. And it's just simply because of how big the opening is. Um, then again, it could cause you problems. You know, the bottom of the toilet has a horn built into it. And so do most flanges, but this one's from the 50s, 60s era. It's a cast iron lead pipe. So I'm going to kind of just drop that in place to somewhat keep and, and use that horn to our advantage. And that gives me something to smash my wax against. It prevents the wax from falling down inside there. And we're actually going to have triple, triple wax on here. other one instead of putting it on top of here to where it can smash in I'm going to set it around our uh, repaired flange that way it smashes against there and ultimately gets a seal now we do this is a slab so we can also caulk the toilet to the floor the only problem with that is if the wax ringer leaks, it discolors the linoleum. But that is an option.
again. No, nah, that's the toilet lid. <laughs> there are times where I do feel like doing that though. <laughs> Uh, there's a side on here that reads this side up. Pay attention to that. Then do, do your washer. Then do your nut. You can do it either way. I've been here lately. For years I've done it with the that side down. Here lately I've been going bevel side down so it keeps the washer centered. <coughs> There's several different ways to get rid of that excess bolt. I know some people carry bolt cutters, little baby ones. When I first started plumbing, I'd do it with a sawzall. Once I got comfortable, I started just snapping them off. And as long as you bend it in the same direction, both ways. It'll get the metal hot enough and weak enough and it'll snap without causing any problems to your toilet. same direction. That's why I tighten it up a whole bunch before I do that. Lines is because you can one they go on easier two they don't burst or break like the other ones do and you can use them several times over like the toilet needs to be pulled so our valve is offset so I'm going to put a slight bend in it to offset my supply line So I'm going to 
shoot around at once with the razor knife. And then, bam. Now, where did I use as a measuring point? Right there, the bottom of the threads. This is where I chose to put my finger for cutting. This one, you can see there's play, so I could have cut it long. Now I do always suggest hooking up the bottom nut first because those threads are fine and they're easily cross-threaded. Now I guess if you had a metal nut up top, that would be easily cross-threaded as well. But I don't like using the metal nuts. Did a real quick little eight turns up on the top. What I'll do is I'll get a hand tight and I'll do maybe a half to a full turn with the channel logs or when you hear it going screeching right there. We're good, that's good. Rather than to use the old metal one, you'd need a toilet rubber like that, and it goes on top there, and that's how you uh, seal the metal ones. I don't like the metal ones. I mean, I guess they're nice and they do last, but I would bet untouched a poly line would outlast this one. These move and they'll start leaking, you know, like right there, because it works on compression. That's just how it works, and I've seen more problems on them than not. Nut. So what I always suggest is just grab some bolt paper, wipe the moisture off, and then set here for 30 seconds to a minute to watch it and make sure that moisture 